we will add more code to our program by actually inspecting what the if clause exactly does. Basically, the if clause is a conditional expression that will go inside the if condition right between the parentheses and it will evaluate. When it finishes the evaluation, if it's true, then the if code block will execute, otherwise it will not. That is, if it's false, it will ignore the code block that will succeed the condition. True and false values are dealt by the C compiler as non-zero and zero. Non-zero, that is positive numbers or negative numbers, are considered true. And zero is equal to false. And to indicate the code block, just like in the main function, we use curly brackets, the opening curly bracket, and then the series of statements that will follow the true ramification of the if clause, that is when the condition evaluates to true, all these statements will execute. Now, this is pseudocode because really one token cannot say anything about any type of operation, but really it is pseudocode to indicate that there are some kind of operations there. Those ellipses are also pseudocode. That's the opening curly bracket and the closing curly bracket in order to indicate the beginning and ending of the if code block, just like the main function. The main function has a code block and that's exactly the body that it contains. So now what we want is to actually give values to this variable something and something else in order for the expression to evaluate to a boolean result. So we are actually first writing a comment, a C++ style comment, explaining that pseudocode is used in the following explanation of code. Because it is educational material, I am using the comment in order to explain what exactly we're using down below what the comment indicates. So pseudocode for the if statement. And pseudocode will also be used in many educational materials, articles, books, training videos, etc., in which the author does not want to specify the language, but just the idea, the algorithm, to be implemented in a certain way. It is just specifying the logic and not the specific syntax of a programming language. The two following statements are also considered pseudocode because they are not being defined, yet they are assigned with a value. We'll understand what's the difference between definition, declaration, initialization, and assignment later on. So now something has been assigned with the value of 10. This is just an assignment and we have not defined the variable and something else has been assigned with the value of 20. It hasn't been defined either, so it will throw an error message when we compile it. I'm doing it on purpose to teach you a little better what definition and assignment is. So something will be some quantity more than something else if that is to evaluate to true, but because it's not the case, it will evaluate to false. Something represents the value of 10 in this expression. Something else will really represent the value it holds, which is 20. Therefore, the if block of statements will be ignored. In this case, the if body or code block will be constructed by an actual function call and an assignment. And those are real legitimate C statements. So print and I forgot F there. Print F, beautiful logic, 10 greater than 20, which is uh, completely nonsense. And I am using sarcasm and saying, yeah, right. So that is the message that the user will read when executing this machine code derived from the source code. So now what we have is this string really that represents something to the user, in which case it's also considered a semantic. Recall that the printf function has the ability to print out to the command prompt. The string that we are passing in this occasion is just one argument, contrary to the previous examples in which more arguments were specified in order to extract the variable's values. I will simply substitute the pseudocode into an actual C syntax statement. This other statement will simply assign the something variable with the value of 15. So so if this if clause is executed, in this case it's not executed, but if it was to be executed, then something will be holding 15 after the assignment and then after the code block of the if statement. A code block that contains more than one statement is considered a compound statement. This if body is a compound statement. Whenever you have a single statement, the C standard does not require the use of curly brackets for single statements surrounding the if body. We will take a look at that later on. And we open the command prompt. Now we do the typical changing of directory to my documents, C projects, and we are just using the backslash and the
the first letter of the directory or the first character of the directory and pressing tab will auto complete the name of that directory for us. So we invoke the GNU compiler collection specify as the first argument the first C program.c. Forgetting to save your source file is very common without an integrated development environment so you have to take acquaintance with always saving your file in your editor right after the changes. It is a good habit and as you can see now we will save the file because otherwise the changes are not applied the changes that we recently made we all tab back to the command prompt and now we can press enter in order to compile now you see a series of errors in line 6 there is something that is undeclared identifier and something else is also an undeclared identifier so uh, what I was telling you before was that we had to actually define and uh, declare the variable definitions in order to be able to assign to them so we will do all at the same time by just specifying the int which is the type of the variable in this case the c compiler allocates space for an integer value which in general for 32 bit machines is 4 bytes and now it is an assignment an initialization a definition and a declaration at the same time we will see the subtle details of what the differences are between each concept but for now let's just say that it will work the gnu compiler collection called with the first c program dot c will still throw an error specifying that print is not a function that is found in the symbols table so print f it is found in stdio.h library so that we can use it typos in your source code might lead to unresolved identifiers the print function was not found we add the f and now the print f function is found on the stdio.h header file and now gcc will be called once again with the first C program.c file and as you can see no error message we will invoke the program that we just created out of the gnu compiler collection press enter and we see that the string of all strings hello world oh and i like the number five so it is ignoring the if body because the print f beautiful logic 10 greater than 20 is not being printed out so now we change the value something is 20 and to make it less than 20 so that it evaluates to true something else is 10 which means that something will actually be more than something else because 20 is more than 10. Now to have another confirmation that the if code block actually executed we will also change the variable being printed instead of the variable label we will call something and as you can see code blocks has the auto completion feature just for this file and it's perfect we just click there and it auto completes the variable name auto completion is one of the many features that integrated development environments have or more specifically an editor has we scroll down and there we have something that will be 15 so that number value will be printed out if this evaluates to true and since 20 is more than 10 it actually will evaluate to true the cold block that defines that is associated to the if clause will actually be executed and here something will hold 15 because as in the code block of the if clause something is assigned with the value of 15. In this case the variable is used as a right hand side value also known as our value. This is because we are using the variable name in a function call argument. We once again compile the first C program.c by invoking gcc and specifying the first argument as first C program.c. Building it does not produce any error. We invoke the machine code program and we see that it executes correctly beautiful logic 10 greater than 20 now that semantic there has to change in order to be correct it is actually 20 that should be greater than 10 so that the code snippet was actually executed we really ought to give the user the correct information failing to do so results in a semantic error yeah right the string of all strings and hello world the first call to the printf function string argument must be changed so we alt tab back to code blocks and we see that printf is being actually executed but the logic tells us that 20 should be 10 and 10 should be 20 so the semantic there is uh, wrong to reassure that the if code block was executed notice that oh i like the number 15 is being actually printed thus the assignment to something with 15 was done so yes the if body is actually being executed
muted. So something there is 15. It changed the, the value instead of 20, it is 15 after it has executed the assignment of 15. So something, even though it was initialized with 20, it changed through the if body and thus it prints out 15. And we correct the 20 greater than 10 so that the semantic of what the user is reading is correct. This is a change to what the user is receiving as output to the monitor. This string is hardwired to the source code. That is, it is not being manipulated from outside the source code. In other words, it is not being generated by other means, like standard input, artificial intelligence, network, clock events, etc. And no sarcasm anymore intended because really 20 is actually greater than 10. And now we have to test our program once again by alt tabbing to the command prompt and once again compiling with GCC. You can press up lots of times in order to have one of the previous commands from what the command prompt memorizes and uh, then you press enter in order to execute the command. An empty command line indicates that the building of the program went okay. You see that by typing in A, once again pressing enter, it executes our executable and beautiful logic 20 is greater than 10. No sarcasm anymore and hello world. Oh, and I like the number 15. So now the semantic is okay. The if clause is actually true and the if body is running. Notice that some characters are printed in a second command line because the command line width was exceeded.